Hey, Dennis O'Brien here on Let's Talk About It. And uh, uh, I'm here with Susan Johnson, but we've been informed by Wayne Norman. And it's been confirmed by our, uh, Matt, our uh, producer, Matt Rupar, that we're, we're only going to be on until 5.30 tonight. So you won't have to listen to us after 5.30. What's going on after 5.30, Matt? Football. Football, that's right. Oh, it must be Wayne. Wayne is going to be on with the pregame show. Oh, go wow. Well, oh, boy, the pregame yeah. sh- uh, football show. Actually, the football team is doing pretty good. They had their first win ever over Boston College last week. <laughs> so Wayne was all pumped up, and uh, he informed us in advance. He said, you know, you're going to be cut short on Friday. He didn't say it was him, though. He said it was – I thought it was a basketball game. I said, basketball? It's pretty early for basketball. But anyway – I mean, early in terms of time, not in terms of the season. There was a time when the ba- college basketball season could not start until December 1st. That went on for years and years and years and years. And now they start it in November, definitely. Anyway, I'm here with Susan Johnson. Yeah. And uh, next week we have an election. That's right, Dennis. It's, it's uh, Tuesday, uh, November the 8th. Correct, November 8th, uh, 8 November. That's the latest, as late as it can be because... <laughs> It's got to be the first Tuesday after the first Monday yeah. in November, and it's never on November 9th. It never goes that far. No, no, it never does, and that's in the statute. Well, the formula. Yeah, that too. <laughs> well, yeah, well, there's a formula in the statute. Well, sta- that's the statu- a great thing. So, yeah, for the first Tuesday after the first Monday, that's why it's 8th. So this is like the latest you can ever have uh, an election is what you just said. November 8th, and we've yeah. had them on November 8th before. Yeah. Because yeah. we've been doing this for a long time. At least I have. Well, I've been voting. I go back 40 years. I go back uh, way back to when I first started to vote, which is you know even longer than forty years. You too. Oh, I mean here in Wyndham is oh. <laughs> when I went on, when I that's when I went on the Democratic I, Town Committee. I just I just could not wait to be able to register my vote when I you know and you know what I had to wait until I was twenty one, but then they changed the date uh, requirement to eighteen when I turned twenty one. Wouldn't you know that, Dennis? Huh? It's hey, before we go before we go into the substance <laughs> of our show, I just want to th- once again. Thank uh, D- uh, Craig and Denny Gates for sponsoring our show. What a good idea. I was over at Columbia Ford having lunch. And by the way, they have a great place to have lunch over there. Yes, they do. Their, their, uh, their lunches are fantastic. And Susan and I had lunch over there. And uh, Craig Gates was there. He said hi. Mm-hmm. And uh, we really appreciate um, Craig and Denny and uh, all the people at Gates to, for sponsoring. Uh, let's talk about it for so long. We think this is an important show. Of course, we would think that. It's our show. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it's been on for, I don't know, 18 years or so now. I, yeah. I, I don't, I think my records don't go back that far. Mm-hmm. But uh, I know our first guest was, uh, I believe it was Bill Curry. Well, we had a lot of first great guests. And oh, we've had a well, lot of great had, guests uh, ever since. I mean, we've been doing very, very well. That's Without right. Guests. We have, uh, except for today, when we only have a, an abbreviated show. We have a guest on every week. Just about, yeah. Not everybody does that. Mm-hmm. In fact, you know what, Dennis? Uh, the What happened today and where I went today was Eastern Connecticut State University. And it was a GOTV Get Out the Vote rally at Eastern put on by the, uh, by the students at Eastern Connecticut State University. Fantastic. And who was there? Wow. Well, we had quite a wonderful uh, introduction from Grace Carlos, who is a student there, and she's uh, the head of the Democratic Party at Eastern Connecticut State University. The, the, the College Democrats. College Democrats, yes. Yeah. And then we have the Mashantucket Youth Council, uh, Shakana Sebastian, and uh, she was a very, very good speaker. Very, very good in trying to get the vote out. And then I spoke. You were the first of the, uh, of the uh, public officials to speak. Yes, I was, and I was just thrilled to be there because, as you know, I'm a graduate of Eastern Connecticut State University, and one of the things I like to focus on is the fact that we need to have the resources to help students uh, pay for their college education, whether it's a college education or it's a technical school education or any type of post-secondary education. We are looking for people to fill jobs, and we need to be able to have them educated for those jobs so that they can get out and work. Yeah, there's all kinds of, uh, of jobs that need uh, special uh, training, and our, our state educational system now uh, is focusing more and more on, on uh, certificates. And uh, we have, uh, Eastern doesn't do that, I don't think, but... I think they might have some certificate program. Certainly the community college system does. And, of course, we have the, uh, we have the apprentice situation as well. 
I was going to say that. Oh, well, but, but well, you, I didn't uh, mean to interrupt. I you, just didn't want you to stop. Well, you know, I don't want to recount how many words we say at each show. And I, oh, I, you do that? I never I do. knew that. I'm, I'm very, <laughs> I, I don't even think I want to be it. treated fairly. I, there are a oh, lot of people that come oh. up to me and say, hey, Dennis, you know, you don't talk enough on the show. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, I think that they're being facetious. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought they were for real, and I, 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 I sometimes did. I worry that I'm too uh, a taciturn is the right word. Oh my! I don't say enough. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can't. So I, 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 you know, some, you know, because you, you like to talk, and uh, me? I don't, uh, I don't get enough, enough words in sometimes. And this is, a, this is a short show, but. Uh, well, anyway, yeah. Go ahead, Dennis. Let me not cut off your thought. Well, I'm, 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 I, I was finished with that thought, and I, I think you wanted to talk a little bit about uh, how you spent the afternoon. Oh well, yes. So anyway, uh, so then uh, I did speak, and I did make stress to the students that. The, all, the only party that actually has been helpful to students with student loans with making sure that Pell Grant, according to uh, Joe Courtney, was there. And he was talking about how when he was in Congress, uh, and he still is in Congress, and he's running for Congress, and so is Dick Blumenthal. And they talked about the fact that they were the ones that passed the, the bills that would support students' educations. And I, and I went on to say uh, a little bit more about how I agree with their view because we want to make sure here in Connecticut we take advantage of the federal laws that are uh, pushed forward by United States Senator Blumenthal and also by uh, Congressman Courtney. But we also uh, want to make sure that Senator Flexer and all the people who are running with me, uh, you know, know and uh, and the people know actually what we have done to make sure uh, access to post-secondary education and training for jobs has been done by the Democrats uh, on the on the national level. Uh, exclusively by the Democrats on the national level, by the way. And uh, also here with Governor Lamont signing on to legislation that's helped us uh, make sure people have more access to resources for college or any post-secondary. You don't have to necessarily go to college. It could be any type of uh, training or apprenticeship. We need the plumbers. We need the electricians. We need the people who are the auto mechanics. We need the mechanical engineers. We need all those people, and the jobs are wide open. According to uh, Lieutenant Governor Bicewitz and Governor uh, Lamont, we have uh, about 100,000 jobs out there that are ready for our students who are graduating, that are ready for apprentices, that are ready uh, so we can get out there and get people uh, not only trained but then into a job that pays a good li living wage without a huge amount of debt. So those, those people will also uh, earn money, they'll be self-sufficient, they will uh, live in our communities and they will pay taxes. That's right. And that's, that's how it works. That's how, that's how it that's how uh, the system is supposed to work, and that's how it works well for for everybody. That we want everybody to have a job who who is able to work and who and, and who you know wants a job, needs a job, and uh, you know I think our our government uh, at the federal level and state level is doing a great job of, of providing that. And one of the things you, uh, you did at the legislature, you and everybody else down there, pretty much, uh, especially the Democrats, is to. Uh, Make a community college uh, free for two years. That's right. Which There's is, free which community is a, college a new now thing. for everybody, and that that is a wonderful thing, and that will take care of people who have a lot of uh, difficulty with finances. So we're going to have that, but also help the the businesses and uh, that have a big need for those kinds of employees that will come out of the community college. So, And we have so many different community colleges that have different specialties that take uh, that do train people to be in jobs at Electric Boat or Pratt & Whitney or Sikorsky Aircraft. All those jobs, we don't want to have them move out of the state because they can't find anybody to work there. So, And they pay very, very well. So you can maybe get out of college or at least uh, get some type of certificate of training or get an associate's degree uh, for free at this point in time and uh, get an excellent job that will help start you off in life. Yeah, I think the stories about our economy uh, being in really, really bad shape are not true. I think we're going through it, a business cycle right now. Mm -hmm. And the people that are making most of, the, most, most of the money off the business cycle are the oil companies. They're making a ton of money. Their, their stocks are way up. Their, their profits are way up. And, and, and <laughs> Get this. That was it was it's told today, and this is right on, in tune. Four 
$2 trillion in one year is what the oil companies are making off of you and me and all the rest of us. $4 trillion. Now, some people think somehow that the Biden, Biden owns the oil companies. <laughs> really? How could you possibly think Biden owns the oil companies? That's absurd. Uh, but that is what, or that the Democrats, or that the government owns the oil companies. The oil companies are oligopolies, and they are owned by these multinational corporations, and they are sticking together in a deal to raise their gas and oil prices way sky high. And they're the big problem in our society and internationally. They're the reasons for inflation. Yeah, like I say, this is temporary. Gas prices have already come down quite a bit. I just filled up my tank the other day, and it was, uh, I think, cost three forty-six a gallon. That's not great, but it's not. I mean, I see things on TV about 7 or $8 a gallon. I mean, I think that's... Uh, in, in fact, uh, there there are businesses that are selling other products that are that are using using those kinds of allegations right in their ads. Oh, we're getting uh, we're we're selling chicken or something like that, you know, or fried chicken, and our prices are very low, and they have a big sign up with gas prices at seven and eight dollars a gallon. Oh yeah, it's, it's it's outrageous. It's outrageous. There ought to be a law against that. Well, you know, Elizabeth Warren and a number of people have come up with a wealth tax, and you take the wealth. If you can pass a wealth tax, which uh, we couldn't get done this last cycle because we had uh, we have a fifty fifty split in the in the uh, Senate, and the United States Senate that is, and because of that fifty fifty split in the United States Senate. We can't get one Republican to side with the people of the United States of America and make sure that we do that wealth tax. And then guess what we could do with that money? We could give it back to the people, the people according to their income. We could give them money back instead of having them over a barrel, uh, oil barrel, uh, <laughs> pun intended, uh, so that, you know, they wouldn't be stuck uh, wondering if they can buy their food or pay for the heat this winter. But we are providing good subsidies. There was a subsidy passed in the Congress this year. So we will be increasing subsidies for families that need and have been running out of uh, resources to pay for their heat. Yeah, I just noticed that. I mean, I, I noticed it again. I, I've, I've read about it before, but it was just uh, publicized recently. So, you know, I, don't, I didn't want to interrupt you because I think you were talking about the agenda for the, the meeting up at, okay. up at, up at Eastern you, today, and you, you should continue. It's all about the chat. <laughs> well, I, I've, I've got a few things to throw in. Well, go on. ahead. Throw some stuff in. I'll throw some stuff in. I, yeah, don't forget, yeah. I want to get my yeah. my fair share of words. Well, you know, we had also my my colleague and good friend, Sean Scanlon. He's running for comptroller position. And you know what he did this last time? He made sure we had the, a child tax credit, a child care tax credit, so people who work would have some reimbursement, some subsidies. That We know that the child care tax credits, whether it's on the federal level or the state level, actually reduces uh, poverty <laughs> because people don't have to pay as much uh, and they have that money back but yet they're working and contributing taxes to the society many other most other countries just allow you to have child care for free just like public education that we have in this country but we haven't uh, we haven't progressed to the same extent as other countries uh, just about every other country uh, that's uh, you know that, that has the kind of wealth we have uh, or less a little bit less well, Western countries, Western yeah. countries, Western democracies. yeah, Western democracies. They right. they have a free child care, they have the the that sort of thing for early childhood, and they also have it for college. Yeah, speaking of, of democracy, that's that's on the that's on the ballot too. Thank you. And I, I, you know, I don't want. I, I thought you would maybe talk a little bit about that, but I. I want to talk about that. That was something. That was a theme of all the uh, speakers. Uh, one of the things is democracy is on the ballot. If we lose the Senate and we lose the House and we lose uh, lose this this time, we will be in a situation where you know they'll be able to pass laws that will stop people from voting. They will be able to pass laws that, uh, that you know, will be uh, really detrimental to anyone who wants to have a free and fair election. Yeah, they'll, able to, they'll be able to pass laws, too. The, I think it's part of the Republican platform, which is headed up by this guy, Rick Scott, uh, former governor of Florida. 
Uh, they, part of their platform is to cut back on Social Security and Medicare. Like to cut it out altogether. What they want to do is have a vote on it every year. Uh, so that or Rick Scott is every year and uh, and get and and by the way, Social Security is an insurance program. It's not in the general fund. So is Medicare. It's an insurance program. It's not in the general fund. Everybody pays into it, and that's where the money comes from. The money comes from you and me and anybody that works. They pay into that program. That's why, in order to qualify even for disability benefits, you have to have those forty quarters. Matt's paying into it now. Yes, he is. He's paying into Social Security and Medicare. And, uh, you know, Matt's just not going to need it for a long time. But we're hoping that it's still around when Matt needs it. And, you know, one of the things that's kind of unfortunate is that younger people don't necessarily think too much about Social Security and Medicare. They don't think about these. And when they're very, very young and they're just starting out, they don't even probably think that much about whether they have health insurance. But as they move on through life, they are in a situation where they need to have the health insurance if they want to have a family, uh, you know, or if they want to do, uh, if they have an illness or an injury, you have to have that health insurance. So, yeah. You should talk about who else was there today. Uh, the governor was there. Of course, uh, Lieutenant Governor Bysowitz was there. Uh, our Senator Richard Blumenthal, uh, Congressman Courtney, State Senator May Flexer. Uh, and, of course, as I was saying, uh, Representative Sean Scanlon. And we also had... Um, you know, the um, Eric Russell, who's running for a uh, treasurer, uh, he's a very smart, good person. So we have had people uh, who are protecting our democracy, making sure students have resources, and protecting our rights uh, and in, in our, in our, and protecting the right to privacy, which is the reproductive freedom uh, and the right to choose. I think it's really important to, to, to tell people that, that you know, these people care about the town of Wyndham. Yes. They care about Eastern Connecticut State University. Yep. They care about this region. They care enough that, uh, what is it, four days before the election, Governor Lamont is in Willimantic. Right. Four days before the election, Senator Blumenthal is in Willimantic. Four days before the election, uh, Lieutenant Governor Bysowitz is in Willimantic, and Congressman Courtney, and Representative Scanlon, who's running for Comptroller, Eric Russell, who's running for... Uh, Oh, and let's not forget William Tong. He was William here. Tong was there. Yeah, I saw a picture of him on <laughs> yes, Facebook. Yes, he was there. Yes, yeah. go William Tong. He has the been an General. amazing attorney general. He has supported us in the Wyndham Hospital issues. He's supported us on Main Street. He's supporting the right to privacy. He's taking care of the oil oil industry and the pharmaceutical industry. He has done so much for the people of Connecticut. William Tong was there too. Our our producer is telling us we've got ten seconds left. Go, Dennis. All right. Everybody should vote on Tuesday. Vote on Tuesday. The important thing is to vote. We want everybody to vote. Everybody. All Democrats, Republicans, unaffiliated, everybody. Third party people. Everybody vote. Vote on Tuesday. It's, it's democracy. It's the basis of our republic. Thank you.